Red Ribbon Realty Group at HomeSmart is a full-service real estate team of Phoenix natives with over 15 years of experience in the industry. When you work with them, you have two full-time realtors representing your best interest throughout your entire transaction, whether you are selling, buying, or renting. They also believe in supporting their community. Use code word chopped greens and Red Ribbon Realty Group will donate 15% of their net commission from your transaction to the nonprofit charity of your choice. Visit their website at www.redribbongroup.com and find them on Facebook. You can also email them at info at redribbongroup.com or call them at 602-888-6638. Red Ribbon Realty Group. Trust. Commitment. Home. Hello and welcome to Chalk Greens. I am your host, Philip Emmerich. Sitting alongside the entire panel, we'll start off to my left over here. I am Gary Boucher. I am Luke Wright. Well, not today. You're Luke Wrong. Well, <laughs> I was waiting for it. I just came here to do a podcast, and honestly, I just feel so personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. So here we are. Let's set up a little timeline for the folks out there. It is after game one of the NBA Finals. NBA boring. Part, <laughs> part two of the bet. And guys, it has come down to these finals to decide only one thing, not who's the champion of the world, but who gets to punish Luke Wright. It's between me and you, man. It's between um, you and me, Gary. You know what's, what's crazy? I'm sad about the result of this game, but I actually bet towards the Warriors, so I don't know why I'm sad. I just, I, I don't want them to win personally. You did what I wanted to do, which is you bet with your mind, not your heart. Not my heart. I bet with my heart, not my, my mind. mind. Yeah. I bet with my heart, too. You bet with your... You bet with your... You bet with your something. Some, yeah, it's a, some, it's a different know. appendage that you bet with, but well, not that your... That sounds drastically inappropriate for this podcast. I'm saying your pinky toe, because you tried to dip your toe into the water, and you just fell completely into the puddle. Thanks, PJ Tucker. Honestly, though, uh, Dwayne Casey should be immediately fired. You're, you're going to start up a Kickstarter campaign? Absolutely. <laughs> that was some of the worst coaching in this entire playoffs. All right, so let's let's kind of do a little review, just in the, in the entire uh, scope of things. These NBA playoffs as a whole, thoughts, gentlemen? They were, they were awful. I don't think there's any other way to describe it. Even the good series were bad. Yep. Um, well, yeah, it, it depends on the on the matchups. If they had involved the Cavaliers or the Warriors, it was a bad series. Well, in in that it was blowouts. It would be great if we got you know, the final two evenly matched juggernauts, but these teams are not evenly matched at all. And that's so you're sure even referring mind. to now the finals. Yes. At no point, in my opinion, at no point were two teams evenly matched except for. The Washington Wizards and Boston Celtics. That was a great but, series. But even that series, if you look at it game by game, it was awful. <laughs> it the, was first, the first five, first five or six, I think were all. First five, I think were blowouts. I was gonna say, were there any overtime games in that series? I think there was. I think Game Six was an overtime where Washington won because John Wall was hitting a big shot at the end of the game. Or maybe yes. that was game five. That was game six. That was game six. Was it? Game six was John Wall took the deep three and then yep. just yeah. smug walked off. That and was it, it was just... But even, at like, 90% of all of the playoff games have been blowouts. You know, even the Clippers and Jazz wasn't a great series. It went to seven, but there were so many injuries, and it wasn't... You never at any point felt like it was two teams at full strength. Gordon Hayward had sickness for a few... For a game or two... Obviously, um, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin both had injuries. So just realistically, I think these playoffs were bad, and what little potential they had for good series still ended up as flops. And, and even at that point, it really sucks because those series didn't matter in scope because the Warriors and the Cavs shredded through the playoffs against all their opponents, and then the Cavs got shredded today, so it was equally as boring. That's correct. And were there any, I'm trying to find out quickly here, but off the top of your, your two gentlemen's heads, were there any overtime games in the playoffs? Yes. Yeah, they were um, a, 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 well, right. a Which small ones? handful. I want to say there were like two. Spurs Rockets, did that go? I think there might have been a Bulls Celtics overtime game, right? I think uh, so. Yeah. I think, there, I think overall there were only like two overtime mm-hmm. games. Which, which I mean... 
is not a lot. No. Oh, actually, the Wizards uh, Celtics series did go to overtime in Game Two. Okay. Game, Just kind okay. of going going through the entire series right now. There was an overtime game in uh, San Antonio Rockets for <laughs> Game Five. Uh, keeping on looking, keeping on going down, going down the road. But the fact that we can't even. Off the top of our heads, yeah. remember what yeah. happened in those oh, games? Memphis, San Antonio. There was actually <laughs> a really crucial game there yeah. for overtime. But yeah, so let's go to your point. Now, you're saying that these are bad games because they're blowouts. Yes. But to me, I don't think it's necessarily a bad game as long as you have narratives. And it's something to be written about. Now, do you remember last NBA Finals as a bad series? No, but if you look back at within context, every other game was a blowout every, last year. I, every game besides Game Seven was a blowout, well, yeah. and that's only if you go and actually look at. It. I think lore becomes reality when you talk about a finals and a season and everything in review. Now, just because last season we had this great seven-game series, when we look back at it and we're selling it this year of, oh, this is the trilogy. This is the, the rubber match between these two juggernauts. I mean, we saw Game 7 last year. We don't necessarily include the fact that each game was a blowout. Just because it was a blowout does not mean that it was not a tight series. I mean, yeah. while each individual... Sure, I mean, it won seven games, and it, it was a great series. It was either team series to take. It was just weird. You know, every other game was, was, was 20 points one way or the other, which is, that, which is why I have hope. <laughs> for my calves and my heart, that they will come back and win. Which is, which is why it's interesting to see that each game in and of itself is a blowout. But yet, we even saw tonight's game. So the final, let's go to finally tonight's game. Game one, NBA, uh, Cav- or the NBA Cleveland Cavaliers versus Golden State Warriors. Golden State takes it 113-91. to After the, I mean, after... After halftime, it was actually impressive it, it to me. Was, what what my small takeaway was for uh, the game was by halftime, it was surprising to me that Golden State was only up by eight. Yeah, I, I mean, at, at midway through, three fourths of the way through the second quarter onward, you just felt that the game was already won. All momentum had been lost. Golden State seemed to get every bucket that they wanted. Er, especially early on, you had Zaza missing a layup. You had David West missing two wide open mid range shots. You just overall you there was could, no scoring within the first two minutes of this yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Overall, you could tell in the first half that Cleveland was lucky that they were as close as they were, but it wasn't through their own skill. It wasn't like they battled to stay that close. It was simply. Golden State had, had some, some shots. Had some home court jitters and missed a few shots. Yeah, that was literally it. Yeah. And then you saw in the second half, they started hitting literally everything. Yep. And this is what everyone knocked on Cleveland, and people thought it would be a bigger problem heading into the playoffs. It ended up not since they only lost one game. But they just can't play defense. And sure, LeBron James can flip on the switch and play playoff defense against one guy, but that – Locking down that one guy is not going to help against the Golden State Warriors when you have Zaza, I think, scoring at least eight points at yeah. half. Um, he ended the game with eight points, but he still he was on pace for 16 points. You know, you just have to be able... Everyone on the Warriors scored at least once except for McCall. He was the only Warrior who didn't get a single point. And you have to wonder... If this is not exactly what Cleveland wanted, anyways, when you're, if you go before that game and you say, "Hey, we're going to hold Draymond Green to three out of twelve from the field. We're going to hold, uh, let's yeah. see, the Steph Curry to." The Warriors really didn't have much of anything besides. Uh, I mean, you look at Durant and, and Curry, but that's I Clay mean, Thompson only shooting three out of sixteen. He yeah. is in a serious slump, only Did, getting six points. Didn't hit a single three pointer. No, no three pointers. If you, but it, if you're it didn't matter one. because the dominance and the the momentum that they built totally warranted everybody playing loosely and openly and missing shots because it it, it felt watching it like everything was going in, but then you look. And really, everything was only going in for Durant, Curry, and Iguodala, who only shot four shots the whole game. To me, this but, entire game boiled down to, ironically, when we think about both of these teams, we think of great three-point shooting. This was really down and dirty inside the paint. 
Uh, every time yeah. I looked, Golden State was getting uh, free layups. I mean, Kevin Durant was going in for uncontested. It seemed like he, dunk he had like six dunk uncontested dunks. Dunk. Like uh, on, on the break, they would just open up in the lane. He and any time the they dunks. would kick it inside to Kevin Love or LeBron James. Even Kyrie Irving would would have trouble trying to go inside. He he did a couple crafty finishes like he always does, but. Kevin Love four out, shooting four out of thirteen here, having to earn those four. He the only four I believe he made a couple of three pointers. Made three, 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 three pointers, three pointers. And one two pointer. He he snatched twenty one rebounds. He had a, he was working his offensive insane. rebounds, but yeah. outside of that, he could not get any inside presence on the offensive mm-hmm. side. LeBron James. LeBron Re- seemed, outside, I mean, you know, a stat line when you first take a look at it looks, looks good, but looks he, rather marvelous. I, I, after the first quarter and a half, he just seemed like a non-factor, honestly. Eight turnovers. He was hurting them as much as he was helping. Yeah, them, which pains me to say, yeah. but eight turnovers is just not going to cut it. When seven in the first half, I believe. I what when I'm picking the Cap- Cavaliers, and I'm ho- trying to make a case for them logically. And not just making an emotional one, you cannot. It's not sustainable to even ask Kyrie Irving. He was holding his own. He was he, his uh, field goal percentage dipped a little bit as the quarters waned, and they were getting more and more out of uh, with, out of range to pull it to a closer game. So he was making worse and worse shot selections, uh, ending up the game with ten uh, for twenty two. You can't really sustain any momentum because even though Golden State started out the first half only leading by five, they were missing some easy shots. And you got to take advantage of that if you're the road team and the refs aren't necessarily yeah. calling everything. But there were a couple calls there that we all agreed that Cleveland was, yeah, yeah. Or, or non calls rather, not even just regular calls. Um, but um, honestly, though, if it feels a close game, I would care more about those non calls. But Golden State just wiped the floor with them. The, those are a non-factor. And I think this out. opens up a really interesting question is, can LeBron carry this team putting up these numbers? And does he need more help than Kyrie? It's funny because 28, 15, and 8 is an excellent stat line, but it's like, is it going to have to do better than that if he's going to carry the yeah, team? He, Which is just impossible. No, I don't yeah. even think it's that he needs to do better than that. What he needs to do is not have turnovers. If he has that entire game and there's no turnovers in there, this is a much different game. This is a, They get more uh, opportunities, yeah, I, I, and I, I, a lot I, of those misses, They the reason why this was close for so long was because it seemed in the beginning the Cavs were out-rebounding the Warriors far, you know, there was a big discrepancy, and they were able to switch possessions, but for every time they would out-rebound the Warriors, the Warriors would just get a turnover. Yeah. It was ridiculous. On how I, I would love to see the stat, the points off turnovers in this game, and the points off LeBron's turnovers, because it's probably like 10 or 12 points off LeBron's turnovers, and then 20 or 30 off of turnovers in general. Because they had, what, 20-some on turnovers compared to four? Golden State tied the record for least turnovers in a finals game. And the Cavs were egregiously awful. But going forward, who does who do the Cavs rely on? So I mean, it's still I mean, it's still LeBron. It's LeBron, is, but you know, at, in the very first series, the first finals matchup between these two, yep. LeBron showed he can't carry this team. He needed yep. Kyrie to be otherworldly last year when they when they won the finals. But does Kyrie? Is he that guy? We really don't know yet. This yeah. is we, we saw it happen last year, but can he duplicate it? Can he be able to do this on a consistent enough basis to where they can win another finals? Because anybody, okay, not anybody, but a lot of people can do it one series. Yeah. But for him, if Cleveland wants to have hope going forward and LeBron wants to at least match Jordan in terms of finals wins... He's Kyrie's gonna have to step it up. Yep. Kyrie's gonna have to start being more like Pippen. I mean, and less like Kyrie. Probably the most memorable moment for me for this entire game was Kyrie Irving making that uh, four point play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was just phenomenal yeah. for me. We're uh, gonna, we're gonna need to see that a lot more. He's got to be able to play at least some sort of defense. We 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 argue, People argued two years ago that LeBron James should have won Finals MVP. And he lost in six games, and he was incredible. But that that's not going to get them. That's just they're going to lose regardless. He okay. needs. So let's let's go to the next part. Clay was 
abysmal in this game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, it's, it's, it's hilarious that well, they still won by almost 30 points. Three, three for 16. I think we should be fair. Okay. Clay does contribute, much like Draymond, Clay contributes on the other end. Okay. With he his hockey assists. He with just ho- with hockey, hockey assists assist assist and also yeah. with with defense. If he's not guarding Kyrie this for the majority of this game, Kyrie probably drops a lot more points and shoots a lot better. Yeah. So you're not worried about Clay's performance, Luke? Mm-hmm. I am not worried about it yet. Because they've proven that if Clay and Draymond it. don't have stellar offensive games, they can overcome it. And I think that's because what the Warriors have that the Cavs lack is that the Warriors can go stretches and shut you down with Clay Thompson on Kyrie, with Draymond yeah. or Iggy on LeBron, with Kevin. Even Curry was showing some good defense uh, through stretches this mm-hmm. this game. So that's something that doesn't worry me because I believe that Clay can contribute in other facets to make him still worth it. And Kyrie doesn't contribute anything other than scoring. He's yeah. not even that great of a playmaker. No, he, he he's not he's not a distributor. LeBron is still the main distributor and playmaker. Kyrie can make amazing plays, but on, on the Warriors, if you have one guy go out, they're the freaking Hydra. Two guys will take their place and score three times as much. It's <laughs> They don't need Thompson. They don't even need Look at Curry. Gary right? Boucher putting in some Greek mythology, <laughs> right? <laughs> Classing it, this place up. It's 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 insane. It's so, it's gentlemen. Is this an omen for what we're going to see in the finals? Is a sweep inevitable? No, no. Cleveland will take at least one game. Um, I I'm not going to say it's inevitable, but I will say that if I put money on it. I would say that if Cleveland's lucky, they will win one game. Wow. So if, if they continue to play like they played tonight. So then, speaking of playing how they played tonight, Kevin Durant. Monster, monster Crazy performance. Crazy game, yeah. 38 Shredding. points. A lot of uncontested dunks before. Is that sustainable? Is that something that we're going to see night after night in these finals? I think KD averages like at least 30 a game. and he, He'll win finals MVP if and when. The Warriors won the series for sure. He he became the best player on the Warriors as soon as he signed. Uh, I definitely I, I have to agree a hundred percent. I I think that KD lost it. when KD lost to LeBron the first time. He took it very personally. Mm-hmm. That's why he's with the Warriors. Is he wants that ring, and that's why he's there. And there's nothing on earth that's going to stop him. I think the Warriors win. I think KD gets a ring. I think KD is the final. KD is the finals MVP. And unless LeBron is on him literally twenty four seven, there's no way that KD doesn't drop thirty a game. Yeah. And even with Durant or even with LeBron on him, KD's still probably dropping close to thirty a game. He'll drop twelve to fifteen just in transition, like he did tonight when LeBron maybe he, he's not on him at that point. You Cavs know? defense is just too. Awful. I think that after the All Star break, I just read they were the second worst defense in the league. The, the Cavs. After, yes, the Cavs were. Yes. And you are not going to be the Warriors, who are what a top five offense in the league, one oh, of the greatest one. teams we've I'd ever seen assemble. The yeah. best, best offense. You're just. It's not. Gonna, you're not going to beat them with the second worst right. defense. You know this is going to sound like it's an insult, but it's really not. It's meant as a compliment. Kevin Durant makes the biggest impact that you do not notice. Mm-hmm. His 38 points are probably the quietest 38 points of the entire player. You you notice Steph Curry's right at the top of the key three. You yeah. notice him coming back off of a turnover and hitting a three. Kevin Durant just does it so quiet. He slowly starts hitting threes, and, driving. And his assists. He has eight assists in this game. I turned over to you, Gary, and I was saying... You know, that's unbelievable that he, and at a time, LeBron James, he and LeBron James had the same amount of assists, I believe yeah. it was at six, and I told you, I didn't, KD is I not remembered a distributor. All, I pretty much remembered all of LeBron James's impact, especially his assists. I had no idea Kevin Durant, I thought maybe one or two, but I, I did not he, he, even have a recollection of If eight. they keep him in the last four minutes, he could have grabbed a triple-double if, if, if he wanted. Oh, he was right there. Triple-double. Plus, my, my highlight, he went team. toe-to-toe with Rihanna. <laughs> he stared down Rihanna several times after nail, nailing well, the free she throw. She did say brick a lot she of times. She screamed brick out, and he switched Ooh. it and just stared her down. He he nailed a three-pointer and stared her down. Rihanna does have good taste. Go re-read. 
you know? That's what we call her in, in, in the streets. I don't think anyone calls her that ever. No, actually, that, no, I will defend. The Re- mean streets of Phoenix, Arizona? The streets. You know who my informant is? The streets, as DJ Khaled once said. Another one. I don't. I don't want to keep talking about. This. I don't want to talk. You don't want to talk about Rihanna. He is the sports expert, not the pop culture. I mean, I do love me some Rihanna. She is one of those. I mean, as a way side tangent, but she is one of my surprising iPod uh, selection loves. Like I, you know, you ever go through your entire iPod and you're like. <laughs> Wow, I have a lot of Rihanna songs in here. <laughs> you know what? Uh, unfortunately, she's not on Spotify anymore. But ah, if she yes. was, Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. I love me some Taylor Swift. Flow Rider. T-Swizzle, as they say on the streets. Anybody who doesn't like Taylor Swift, as Clayton Kershaw would say, is lying to himself. Remember when we did a podcast yesterday... You told me they didn't like her, and I used her against you in your most hated celebrities question. I do, I do, but I you don't doesn't like mean that I like it that I like yeah. her. I hate that I like her. You want to know an interesting stat about Taylor Swift? Totally, no, no, just about this game. <laughs> totally off the cuff. <laughs> what? Both teams almost shot the exact same three point percentage, but the Warriors' field goal percentage was almost ten percent higher. Cavs shot thirty five percent. Warriors mm-hmm. shot forty two percent. When you don't stop like ten blocks or ten dunks yeah. in the first five minutes of the game, it's hard to recover from that. That that's a terrible on the Cavs part. Thirty four point nine percent field goal percentage. Well, their three point percentage was higher than that, and th- at thirty five, not even terrific. That's finally we go to Draymond Green, much akin to Clay Thompson. Who's in a better? Who's in a worse slump, uh, theoretically, Draymond Green or Clay Thompson? Luke, let's I'm, go with you first. Um, I'm gonna have to say, Clay's in a worse slump. Okay. Because you do expect Clay to be that shooter. Like Draymond, you just know going into it, he he's can, the fourth option. Yeah, he's not going to be. You know, we know that Clay is capable of dropping thirty in a quarter, not a game, a quarter. <laughs> But not, 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 not a game. Not, not a just, game. Just a quarter. quarter. But at the same time, Draymond, you know coming into it, is realistically not going to drop 30 even in a game. He's probably going to give you 10 to 15, but he's going to lock down defense. He's going to rebound. You can use him to run a fast break. So to me, this is more typical of Draymond, whereas Clay. This really does look like a slump that he's been in a while. Gary Boucher? I, I'm going to have to say the same thing. Clay Thompson last year, we talked about a, a guy who was maybe secretly the best player on the Warriors was Clay Thompson, a guy who could go off at any moment. He had more of an arsenal than Steph Curry. He was bigger. But you're not saying in the finals, better. you're just saying overall. No, right? I'm just saying overall, a lot of people For think he's a better year? player than Steph Curry, but then, you know, he comes in and has a. Semi a bad game first game, but Draymond, if you watch this semi game, bad game for the first yeah. game, th- shooting three out of sixteen, and I'll zero forgive for five it because they blow him out, and it's not really noticeable. But well, but if they lose, that's if they lose, a he has a terrible game. But Draymond, if, <laughs> isn't if, that funny? Isn't that a funny fickle thing? Yes. If they win, okay. But if they lose, it's but ridiculous. that's actually society. That's yeah. the reason why people like Clay Thompson, why right. Draymond Green will take pay cuts, and even Kevin Durant, why they will do pay cuts because. Hey, you will sacrifice in lieu of winning. Yeah. Clay Thompson, here's a little hot take for you. Hot take! Clay Thompson leaves the Warriors first. Oh, agreed. In totally, years? totally. No. Good to know. No, within I'm next, thinking on that too. Whenever free agency contract hits for him, I think it's this offseason or maybe next. No, it's next. Is it next? Next. This year I, is the summer of Iggy and Sean Livingston. Okay, so the next summer, I think he leaves. He's out. Next, the next summer, it is Draymond Green and Clay Thompson. Yeah, I think they choose Draymond over Clay. Clay Ooh. leaves, gets a max contract with the team that's looking for that minor superstar, and he goes and tries to lead his own team, and he basically becomes like what Paul George is on the oh, Pacers mm, right now. Well, I gotta tell you, if I'm if I'm Warriors management, besides them actually keeping this core together, which that will happen, you were wrong about that. But if if I'm Warriors management and a decree comes down from Joe Lacob and it says Philip, you can only keep either one Splash brother or you can keep Draymond Green. I let me tell you, Charles Barkley Jr. is gone. 
Draymond Green is out of the house. Really? I'm keeping Clay Thompson. I, I definitely Draymond, keep Draymond. Is, you can see it. He, he is an energy guy. He's a playmaker. He, he's their glue guy for sure. You can buy more glue at the supermarket. Just fi- You cannot oh. find another Clay Thompson I think who makes can. a great impact without even doing anything. Draymond Green, no, I know Draymond Draymond Green, Green does the same impact thing. Without doing anything. He does, but he does not have the ability to impact above his above what not above his not doing anything. So Clay Thompson can draw people out, can has that ability to have a thirty point quarter, but Draymond Green, you don't respect him on a on a at the top of the key shooting a three. You just say, well, if he's going to beat us with that shot, okay, you but, live with it. But I I still take Draymond. His defense is a lot more valuable than Clay's. And yes, he has a wider variety. I'll give you yeah. that. He gives the ability he, for the Warriors to play that uh, small death lineup. Small ball center. But also, it's crazy. and this is pure speculation. This is a question I'm posing to you guys. Okay. Let's say Clay Thompson comes up to you and he says, "Hey, I'm sick and tired of being the third option." Well, I, uh, I, four, but yes, 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 proves yes. my point even more. Yes, I'm tired of being this. I want to be a first option. At worst, second option. He just doesn't run me that but way. But hold on. Let's say he does. Okay. And he basically goes up and he tells the Warriors organization, I am not signing back here. If you're the Warriors, do you trade him and get something for him? Or do you keep it through the season and hope that with him on your team and him playing in the contract year, you can get one more title out of him? And then just lose them in the offseason. All right, so two things. One, I don't think that's going to happen. Clay Thompson, to me, does not pose that big of an arrogance or ego that he demands. He, but but I'll, I'll accept the premise. I'll accept the premise. The premise instead. that you think yes. you might have to – you might lose him. That's, that's, let, me, let me then give you a, a premise. If I could trade Clay Thompson for, say, a Jimmy Butler, is that not a win-win? Is that not – Depends even, on the contract even, situation. Well, but I mean, if it were even this year, you're trading him for the same year, and and I'm sure whenever that were to occur next year, you can find yet another rental, and you can find somebody who's disgruntled in their spot and doesn't want to be on a losing team, and you can just swap situations. Except if, eventually if I, the contract runs out. It does. So I mean, you can only do that a year, maybe two. Okay. And even then. I'm not sure if you can get a Jimmy Butler unless Jimmy Butler's contract's expiring too. If you're if you're trading an expiring contract Theoretically you could get the next boogie, whoever that may be, when he has three years left on his contract and the Kings still wanna give him up. I'm, mean, I'm saying maybe, I'm yeah. saying there are ways to substitute and fill it out and maybe with your current cap situations with having to pay then if he weren't to go three players deep at the max You'd have to wiggle around some room anyways. And then maybe you want a draft pick. Maybe you trade the Celtics and give them clay and you get that number one and you get a Markel Fultz to efficiently sub in and give you that same production, hopefully. Yes, the, the answer is yes. You do not let him go away for nothing. That is a, a franchise killer uh, if you let a superstar walk away for nothing. Um, and sometimes some franchises fail even in saying, in spite of doing that. Like, look at Carmelo and the Nuggets. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. But it's, it's worse for those who get nothing. Do you trade him? Gary? First of all, I think that your prediction is spot on. Clay, I was thinking about this throughout the season and tonight. He is totally going to be the first guy to go. Um, I think he totally, in contrary, uh, in contrast to what Phil said, gives me vibes of he would be the first one to leave. I think he has star potential, not like Hall of Fame superstar potential, but I think he could totally be the a Reggie Miller. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, the, the best guy on a second round team, like like a Gordon Hayward level to type me, if player. Anybody breaks away with that ego, it, it, it would be Draymond Green who says, "I am the battery of this team. Why am I not getting it's, anything run?" Through it's it's, for me? it's an interesting choice though because the Splash Brothers are what brought the Warriors yes, yes. from notoriety from yeah from nothing to being these lovable two guys, and so <laughs> I don't know how lovable they are anymore. They were lovable. They were. I mean, I loved the Warriors two years ago. They were they were my favorite team to watch back then um i mean obviously so so the question again do you if you're faced with getting rid of clay thompson do you trade him or let the contract run out no i mean logically i think you trade him because there's still a championship team without clay thompson 
Um, and so um, I, I, I would try to get something for him because if, if he's going to be gone, he's going to be gone. And logically, if you can get a few more role players, I mean, the Golden State front office knows what they're doing better than almost anybody. They've built this team from nothing. I think it's an interesting question because you're essentially, especially if they win this year, you're almost guaranteed next year then to win it again because they could go little, to the finals for the next uh, yeah, three four a, a years. Few, Calm down, Jeff. Uh, yeah, a very few <laughs> amount of moves yeah. could no, be made right. to challenge that team outside of LeBron going s- to San Antonio for the minimum or something. You know, something yeah. crazy. Something it would have to take a spontaneous move that would change the nucleus of the NBA as we now see it. Uh, something akin to Kevin Durant leaving last year. Something explosive would have to happen. Mm-hmm. Are there any stars poised to do that? No. Well, there is the uh, Chris Paul thing, which you think I is, don't. I don't think doesn't that, hold a lot of weight. Well, I don't. I think that Chris Paul is not that high of a star anymore. No. I don't think Chris Paul is but a he's game savvy. He's savvy, and he I, is. I and I like his he's his uh, coach ability on the on the floor. He makes every team better. I just don't and what did think you want to he's not a guy who you which put him team? on your team and they go to the finals. But, yeah. but right. I don't think they make the Spurs a, a championship but team. Which team would you want an aging veteran superstar on besides the Spurs? Who who coaches yeah, aging superstars better than Popovich? There, there's no question that I mean the Spurs are a finals caliber team every year and that would make them even better. Does that make them able to beat the Warriors? No. You know what? <laughs> Let's be honest right now. Are the Spurs still an NBA finals caliber team every year? Are they? they were missing three starters this year. I think without the loss, if they have of, Kawhi and Parker in that series, they have okay, they have a series. six game series, very yes. like very least. But yeah, I think we all know even with Kawhi, it was a very long shot that yeah. they would win, even with For Kawhi sure. and Parker. Parker's getting even older, and now he's coming yeah. off a major surgery. Manu's not. Is probably not he's coming back, but leg, even if yeah. he does, he's also on his last legs. LaMarcus well, Aldridge didn't work out as well as people thought it as would. As well. Yeah. Half as well. I mean, like, it has. <laughs> yeah, it definitely hasn't been great, Woo! but... LaMarcus well, Aldridge... So oh. really, that team is Leonard, a bunch of role players like Patty Mills, and Greg Popovich. And Popovich yeah. is also definitely on his way out. They are a uh, existential like playoff a team... Like a legit, not yeah. even like a bad, but like somebody who can't play. He just looks like a legitimate I mean, guy. Like if he were to walk around in like homeless clothes and ask for money, Popovich, would, yeah, probably. He might. I okay, Ruby, totally. I should not even be saying this, but she she asked me last time she we saw him and she didn't know who he was. She's like, oh my gosh, is he dying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, I'm he's dying right. on the inside. Like, he's, he's, three he's, years ago, when the Heat and the Spurs had played each other for the second time, we were talking about, like, oh, my God, the Spurs have this championship dynasty winning from, like, 99 all the way up to, like, 2012. They have this 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 control over the NBA, and now, like, like kind of like Luke said, that's not in the conversation it's anymore. Just, now it's, it's all worse. Now they are essentially um, – I'm thinking of a good team to compare them to. They're kind of like – the Celtics of the 80s. They're right always now. there. They're, They're always going to yeah. be there. But realistically, you know, they're not going to win. No. Magic is going to win. Or Durant Isaiah. and Curry are going to win. You know, that's <laughs> the thing. is like the Spurs are that team that you know will be a top three seed. But realistically, you don't think that they're good enough to win a title anymore. And now it's just going to be snowballing worse and worse for them because Manu's probably leaving, because Parker's old and injury-prone, because Popovich can retire any year now. Okay, so then if we do accept that, that the Spurs are not winning and that we go back to our original premise of do you trade Klay Thompson, it's an interesting dilemma because you're essentially trading an assured championship. You're an assured championship for one year. It's it's the Michael Jordan dilemma of where you know that that thing is ending that year, that last year of the uh, the 6 for 6 Michael Jordan Bulls, that last year where everybody knew everybody was going separate ways. Phil was gone, Michael was gone, what have you. Do you do you keep in and cash in for that last championship or do you Hold on for the for the long term benefit if, of the franchise. Are you asking for for Clay for Clay for if, Clay? Because if you trade him, no Do matter you, who you get, outside of a Jimmy Butler, who is even then, it's a very different dynamic. He does not do what Clay Thompson does. Uh, and you're at best hoping for a Mar- Marquise Fultz, somebody who is NBA ready and able to be 
put in and right then and there play in the place of clay. Do you trade that in? It's an interesting dilemma. So let's and that that's something we can ponder and kick about during the off season if and when that comes and depending on whether the Warriors win or not, which leads me to ask each of you gentlemen, how long does the series go? We already have a one oh Golden State lead. How long does the series go? Who wins? And Luke, we'll start with you. Um I'd say the series goes five. Cleveland will probably win the one at home. Oh, I thought you were going to say Cleveland wins in five. I was like, no. Ooh, <laughs> that is a hot take. That is well, hot out of the oven ramen right there. Warriors <laughs> win in five. Cleveland wins one at home. Um, in the end, I think also this is going to be a huge wake-up call for the Cavs. Um, what are they going to do in the offseason now that they know that... That is an old team. It's, that is a very old Not team. only is it an old team, it's not a star-studded old team. It's not like the Celtics when you will. had Pierce, Garnett, Allen, and Rondo. You have Kevin Love, who you, who's been hit or miss really since he moved there. Let's be honest, everybody besides Kyrie Irving and LeBron James is expendable. On exactly. Mm-hmm. But, yes, they're all extend- expendable. Who do you replace them with? Well, that's that's up to David Griffin or the soon to be hired GM. I was gonna say because I and re, but realistically, I don't know if you can replace them anymore with uh, better or above average replacement parts. You're saying? Yeah, I think. So and, anyway, so anyways, let's yeah. get back. So you're just saying five? Yeah, five. Golden State and five. Golden State and five. And when uh, Cleveland takes one at home, Luke. That's I just answered Gary. <laughs> Sorry. Move. My Sorry, original move prediction was Golden State and six. After seeing this, after feeling this, I am kind of leaning almost towards the same thing that Luke said. Um, I think Cleveland will compete a little bit more next game. Maybe it's, it's a close game, but I still think that they drop them both in Golden State, win one at home, and I think that'll be it for him. Maybe it'll be like a, a 10 to 15 point loss every time, not a complete blowout, but I I think that they lose in five. What a reversal of the times. Miami Heat and LeBron James took out Kevin Durant and the Thunder in five games. He was young. Russell Westbrook wasn't a superstar at that point. Now it's in reverse for five. Okay. I think... LeBron is like like the wise old man of this series. He's the guy who's been there, done that. He's sage, the MVP, the everything. He's got all these youngins coming for him. He's beautiful. It's true. It's true. Um, okay. If there ever is a must-win game that's not an elimination game, it is game two. It is game two. If Cleveland has to take one game in Golden State, or else it's done. If they do not take a game away, a game away right now, I do not think that they can win four out of the next five. No, because Golden State could go down 0-2 and they have the firepower to come back, but Cleveland yes. has to win one. They have to. This is their game so, seven. So, knowing that. Every game in the rest of this series is. Is there game seven? seven? Honestly, for the for the Cavs. For the yeah. Cavs, not if they win game two. So even then, even then, this is going to be, this is going to be, a Cleveland win in game two. Which means that Golden State will storm back in game four. Cleveland. Are we skipping game five? Game, are we skipping game three? Well, because that's going to be Cleveland's blowout. Uh, game five, Cleveland wins. And then Cleveland wins in Roar or in, in the Quicken Loans Arena, Game Six, Cavs and Six. You think the Cavs are are winning it? I think in it was six. a bad first game. LeBron goes and stews over the next two games, which Luke is absolutely livid about. Hey, I would love that. I would love to see that happen, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, but <laughs> it's I would really love to see that happen. Well, it's not happen. Happen. I wouldn't love to see it happen, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> so I mean, so Luke's happy. Nobody thought three one comeback would happen, and until the ship is it's burned different. down, until the lifeboats are all gone, I will sink with the ship. I will make sure that I will do my best to punish Luke Wright. Not you, Gary Boucher. It will be me. I have decides, a sinister plan for my friend Luke over here. As do I. I, I don't like either of these <laughs> ideas. Which, by the way, let's remind everybody listening as we wrap up this uh, game one review bet podcast. We have the option of a face mask for Luke Wright, that black, charcoal, painful. We've all seen the YouTube videos. We have option two, 
nails for a week. We get to paint his nails for a, a week. I actually can't do that. Toenails. I can do toenails. I Where I work, food business, we are not allowed to have painted nails. Okay. So that one is You might have to change it up unless you're cool to, with yeah. toenails. I, I'm fine with toenails. It won't matter. Fantastic. I'm not sure if that's as embarrassing as you guys... We'll see. All right, and then game three, or excuse me, game three. <laughs> that's that's Cleveland's game to win. Uh, but no, uh, the oh rookie mistake. Uh, punishment number three: waxing one item, one singular item on Luke Wright's body. That, that is camera friendly. That left pectoral is gonna be nice and smooth. Woo! Once the Warriors win, which Luke knows the Warriors are going to win, so he, you better just prepare yourself for some waxing right now. Apparently, one underarm costs around $15. We are not going to wax your underarm. It's okay. Speak for yourself. I don't think anyone wants to see anyone's underarm. I, I want to see it nice and clean. All right, here we go. There we go. There's a little preview of what's to come when Cleveland wins. Oh, God. And we will see LeBron James float to the heavens. And ascend. Is, is he gonna Michael die? Drake. If Cleveland <laughs> wins the series, he's the goat. Oh, but hot take is already the goat. What? There we go. All right, let's go around the room for Gary Boucher. For Luke. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was with all the uh, all the uh, athleticism and uh, uh, excitement <laughs> he could muster. That was just horrible. I am Phil Van Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> and LeVar Ball. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Check out Chopped Greens on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook. We are everywhere. And stay tuned for the next movie review. Bye. <laughs>